Cool. So guys, the, the topic for today's webinar is how to recruit technical talents, how to interact with hiring managers, especially if you haven't written a single line of code yourself and you don't understand the IT terminology yet. So uh, this is what we are going to focus on for the next, um, I don't know, 45, oh. 50 minutes or so. So guys, uh, so um, if um, any of you have uh, any questions, feel free to ask me um, anytime. You don't have any background. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Um, you don't need it. You don't have to uh, turn on the camera. You can just uh, keep it off and you can write in, uh, in chat. Uh, so um, feel free to just write where are you guys uh, located, where are you based right now. Let me know in chat. I'm now in Slovakia. I used to live in uh, Czech Republic, in Prague. I used to live in uh, Thailand, in Bangkok. But right now I'm in Slovakia. So I just type in chat, where are you guys based right now? How excited are you? It's Thursday, right? You're in Romania, expat from India. Cool. Katarina is in Zagreb. Cool, Croatia. Yeah, I've uh, visited a few times. A wonderful place, wonderful place. Macedonia, Irina. Hey, good to see you here. Slovakia, Diana. Cool, yeah. Well, I can switch to Slovak maybe for 10 seconds. <laughs> cool. So uh, while everyone is connecting, I can uh, just uh, tell you a little more about the agenda. So first, a quick introduction for those of you who have um, not um, joined some of my previous sessions. I'll uh, focus on the three strategies that you've probably seen on the page before you joined. And then there will be a um, FAQ or Q and A a session, question and answers. Uh, so the first thing I would like to mention is that if um, some of you guys are struggling to fill IT positions and interact with IT candidates, it's probably most likely not your fault because there is a lot of information out there and IT itself can be really confusing. Because there are all these IT terms and IT roles and acronyms and uh, terminology, right? There are programming languages, software frameworks. So, you know, it's okay not to know everything. And in fact, I've been working in IT for, I don't know, 16, 17 years. And I don't really remember all the terminology, right? It's not really uh, even possible, I would say, because there are so many terms. So if you've been concerned in the past that you just cannot succeed in this international tech recruitment space, I would like to put these fears to rest for a while uh, because IT, luckily for us, uh, is the same whether you are in the USA or Australia or Europe or Asia, Canada or uh, India, or whether you are in uh, Macedonia or Romania like some of you or like in Slovakia as uh, Diana and me. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good for us, right? It's the same around the world. Um, and also because of, or probably thanks to COVID-19, even more IT professionals work remotely these days. So you can thrive in IT recruitment. Probably you just need the right person to explain the whole you know, stuff uh, to you. So uh, if you've ever felt, on the other hand, that software developers hesitate interacting with recruiters, you are probably right. Um, software developers don't really like talking to recruiters and headhunters who know very little about IT. And I've been you know, on the other side of the fence. I used to be a developer and I used to you know, talk to a lot of developers. So um, I've seen the clash firsthand. So, but you know, here is what we are, uh, that's why we are here tonight. I assume you guys are here because you want to fill more vacancies. You want to earn a lot of money as a recruiter, headhunter, talent hunter. And I want to show you how to make that happen during this webinar. All right. Sounds good. Give me some thumbs up in the chat. Um, so if you are an independent recruiter or if you work for a recruitment agency, you will learn how to grow your business. And if you are working as an internal HR manager or probably a talent acquisition specialist, you will learn how to get more candidates, apply for your vacancies. So my goal for this web class is actually twofold. First, I would like to explain why the best way to fill lots of vacancies in IT is through value adding interactions. And second, why the best way to monetize 
your existing relationships with IT professionals is through a partnership with Career Upgrade Tools. So um, let me briefly introduce myself for those of you who have not joined any of my sessions before. I'm uh, Michael, in Slovakia it's Michal. Um, I'm not a teenager anymore because someone just recently said like, you know, like what, what does he know? Like he looks like a teenager and you know, it, it was like a compliment probably, <laughs> but I have already some wrinkles here uh, due to my two kids. Uh, um, uh, but you know, I was in IT for 17 years. I co-founded three companies in different countries um, and uh, I grew one of them to $70 million in annual revenues. So um, I've been a software developer for about 10 years, an IT director for five years, and uh, most recently an IT recruiter for the last two years. And over uh, 24,000 people, especially IT and HR professionals went through some of my online courses. Uh, so when I was the CTO in Bangkok, uh, this is the team I worked with. Some of them were in IT. Um, so I'll be talking about some of these positions and what does it mean for us now in recruitment. Uh, this is uh, with my son in Bangkok, uh, with my wife now here in Slovakia, with my two kids. And uh, this is how we now work uh, during this uh, lockdown here in, you know, in Slovakia. It's quite uh, annoying these days. Um, when we can, we just go outside and we go hiking. But this is my most favorite activity, just to get a book and um, read or take some notes. Um, but in general, I thrive when I'm interacting with software developers. I'm organizing meetups or hackathons. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Lakshmi. Um, and I recruited and hired many of those who visited the hackathon. As you've seen, like this was the biggest hackathon I organized in Bangkok, 150 people. And I recruited some of them. You know, lots of my colleagues relocated from different countries and continents. Um, you know, United States, uh, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand. But when I relocated back to Europe, I started a recruitment agency. And when I hired my first in-house recruiter, I started creating some onboarding materials for her. Um, because I wanted her to understand the IT terminology so she can interact with candidates because I knew how important it is for a recruiter to know about IT, right? I wanted her to be confident, to speak with candidates, to talk to hiring managers. Um, and over time, I created this huge library of videos and, uh, you know, mind maps and whatnot. And later, some of my friends from other agencies started asking me if they can also use it and onboard their new joiners. Uh, eventually, I opened it up to public. And um, that's also why, you know, why we are here now going to look at some of these mind maps. So you can also, uh, guys, uh, take some inspiration. Um, so um, I'm telling you all this because I want you to see that this approach has not worked just for me and my team, but I also start teaching these strategies and best practices and tactics to others who started recruiting tech candidates internationally. So to date, my consulting and training clients include re recruitment agencies, startups, corporations in the EU and US. As you can see, Manpower, Xperis, Accenture, Kelly Services, etc. They invited me before Corona to train on site. And now it's mostly online. So uh, over 24,000 people enrolled in these courses. And I'll be sharing some of these with you right now. So now, you know, why is this important? Well, because this experience allowed me to observe what and how other recruiters in IT do, what mistakes they make, how to avoid them. So I'll be sharing some of these uh, in the next uh, 40 minutes or so. So let's cut to the meat of the matter, right? The first uh, secret or um, chapter of this, uh, of this webinar will be um, focused on how to write compelling job promotions that IT talents cannot refuse not, uh, not to give you their contact details, even if they are not looking for a job right now. Second, we will focus on how to engage with dozens of IT candidates without sending them hundreds of emails manually every day. And third, how to get additional commissions for those candidates who are not hired immediately yet those have high disposable income and want better career opportunities. Okay, so let's start with uh, the first one, writing compelling job promotions. So um, here is what happened two years ago. It's crazy how time flies, right? How can it be already March uh, 2021? So after I relocated from Thailand, a CEO from a local startup called me and mentioned they cannot find a backend developer. 
I looked at their, their JD job description and I sort of immediately saw what was wrong. This was the JD, you know, um, quite messy, you know, um, I, you know, the orange text was added by me afterward. But even if you look at the black text, you see that it only focuses on the obvious stuff. You know, we are looking for a PHP developer responsible for managing backend services and the interchange of data. And I was thinking like, oh my God, like every PHP developer does this. Like, why do you even write this to this job promotion? It's not really in interesting or important for the candidate because all of them does it. And then I, you know, continued, continued, and um, there was nothing really interesting about the company, despite I knew the company is really cool. There was nothing about uh, the key skills, must-have skills. It was really, really messy, a job description. So um, we sat down for 20 minutes, I rewrote it, and eventually this was the result. You know, something more concise, something more exciting, something that um, some call job advertisement or role advertisement, something that starts with a good hook at the beginning to get attention of people on the social media, on LinkedIn. And then it continues with a story, you know, like at first senior PHP developer in Slovakia, anyone, and then a story. Jana is looking for a full stack PHP developer to join her startup. It's written in Symfony. There is obviously backend front end database as you would expect. Okay, so for PHP developers, for backend developers, you just need to tell them the programming language and the framework. And that's pretty much it, right? The rest uh, could be just learned on the job or it's not relevant uh, much. So, so that's why I wrote it this way. Um, and then I continued uh, with uh, a little more information to make the position more exciting, more interesting saying that this is good for developers who prefer working in smaller teams and are keen to take responsibility for their tech decisions. Spano is a funded startup with an MVP. You know, I'm using some of the technical terms. Uh, the MVP stands for minimum viable product. So, um, you know, I'm trying to speak the developer's language while making it more exciting and focusing on what they care most about. Um, eventually, they got several applicants the next day and uh, within a week, you know, like um, I don't recall exactly, but within seven days, they extended an offer to their ideal candidate who eventually worked there for one and a half years. It was successful because it resonated with the right audience, with the right candidate. So, but if you look at the market, the opposite is happening these days, which uh, causes lots of frustration. So imagine there is a developer and he or she receives a message at 9 a.m. You know, hey, we are hiring. And then another message at 10 a.m. And we are hiring. And then another message at 1 p.m. Hey, uh, Joe, we are hiring. And then another message at 3 p.m. We are hiring. And another message, right? Like they receive so many messages on LinkedIn because it's, um, I don't know, free, you know, to send the message. So they get lots of messages on LinkedIn. But that causes also lots of frustration because those messages are not really... Uh, tailored to their role or position, which eventually causes uh, quite a lot of friction. And also those job requirements, job descriptions are not really um, exciting. If you just open up Indeed or whatever platform, you would see this mess. Like who has time these days to go through something like this or something like this, right? Like today, people have short attention span. They don't have time to go through all these bullet points unless you know, it, it gets their attention. So we also need to go, uh, go, go this way. Imagine for a second that you are Joe the developer. How would you feel if you received 30 messages per week? And they really get lots of messages per week. I later went on to interview my friends from IT and uh, also some colleagues to figure out what exactly are they interested in. So then I created this mind map um, which you should also have in your uh, worksheet. If you downloaded the worksheet, um, then uh, it should be included there. Um, and it focuses on what the developers are interested in. So at first, it's technical stack, but not all 20 terms, but the must-have skills. Say in the previous example, it was PHP and the framework Symfony. Like that's must-have. Um, but otherwise the developer can learn the testing framework or, you know, whatever else um, on the job. Um, obviously, the more work methodology, when I was the CTO, 
um, especially the senior developers were interested in learning more about how we operate, how we develop, uh, what kind of tools do we use, um, how, into what extent have we adopted the best practices, et cetera, et cetera. Number three, team. So the team size, seniority, are there any superstars? Is there any technical lead to guide him or her? How does the team work? How do they um, operate? How, what kind of tools do they use, right? And number four, project. So some projects are long-term, some are short-term, some go deeper in the technology, some are just using some you know, uh, very, very common tools uh, or libraries. So that's also very important. But if you look at some of these job requirements, right? Like you cannot find answers to any of those. You don't know anything about the team. You don't really know about the project, nothing about the uh, technology or technical stack, just requirements. So um, it's, it's uh, not really uh, compelling uh, for technical talents. Um, so I, I have a few, few phrases that I like to use and I just fill in the blanks. For example, are you looking for, or would you like to, if you are, and you would like to, I've got some opportunity for you and i like to actually focus on some of these areas from a mind map and i try to get them interested in in the particular job um, so i would say that copy pasting job descriptions without understanding them is a road to hell that's not really a sustainable strategy IT specialists, well, they don't like it at all. This was a comment on my Facebook page just recently. Martin, a Java backend developer, wrote, I hate HR because they have no idea what they are talking about. They just keep saying Java, CSS, this framework and that, but they have actually zero knowledge about that. They just know the words maybe. And that's quite sad, right? I, I, I organize training sessions and webinars and whatnot to actually help those who transition from non-tech fields to IT to understand the IT landscape and speak with developers like Martin um, on, a, on a better way. So I talked to dozens of recruiters about this problem and they often tell me they copy paste JDs because they don't know what do those IT terms actually mean. And I would say that's okay, as long as you would like to still learn that. So now you are probably wondering how can you do it if you have not worked in IT for 15 years and you don't know the terminology yet. Um, so I would say these are the steps that uh, we've perfected over the last two, three years while working with, uh, with uh, developers, uh, sorry, not developers, but recruiters. And these are the five steps or something we call the key to success. You know, at first uh, you need to start with the basic IT terminology, because if you don't really know what is an API, it will be very difficult to understand who is an API developer, right? Um, or if you don't know what is CI, CD, then it's quite impossible to effectively look for a DevOps engineer. So we start with the IT terminology. And then you will learn about the IT roles, uh, the standard roles, even though there are some synonyms, say programmer, coder, developer, full stack developer, you know, it could be the same person. So we have some set of standard IT roles. And then you would learn what tools, what languages, and what frameworks do the IT professionals use. As soon as you know what tools they use, then you know um, who are you talking to just based on the tools or frameworks that they use. I'll show you a mind map in a second. Next, um, I suggest you learn about the common personas and what do they usually value and prefer most. I'll show you another mind map. And next, uh, the last step, you would understand some of the company stereotypes and their pros and cons from the candidate's standpoint. So you can effectively sell it to the candidate. So starting with the first one, the basic terminology, you know, it has an end. It's not endless. There are a few dozens of uh, terms that I would uh, say are within this must have bucket. Uh, for example, you know, Agile, obviously, or uh, Kanban, Scrum. Um, I'm looking at, uh, say, cloud providers, IBM, AWS, uh, UX, UI, uh, DevOps, MVP, I mentioned already, right? Like some of these terms, it's essential to know them. Um, there are some acronyms. You know, acronym is um, uh, just a, a few letters that stand for some word, for example, OS, like operating system or 
um, SPA, single page application. So, you know, it's not uh, 5,000 of them, it's just these 50 and you just learn it and you are better than 95% of all recruiters out there. Second, you would learn about the standard roles. You can see this mind map. You also have it in your worksheet. The front-end developers, back-end developers, full-stack developers, mobile app developers, they also use some languages and some tools. I have it maybe here. Oh yeah, here, for example, C Sharp, uh, the .NET developers, they um, use, for example, Xamarin for mobile app development or ASP.NET Core for web development. So as soon as you learn this, well then, you know, you look at the profile on LinkedIn and you see ASP.NET and you immediately know you are looking at a C Sharp backend developer because ASP.NET is used on the backend for web development. So eventually it's not rocket science, right? Um, you would learn about the common personas, for example, makers, crafters, like some developers like to start new projects from scratch, while others like to work in a comp corporate environment and just maintain existing projects. So uh, it's good to be aware of these differences because then you can talk to them in a way that uh, they get excited. Um, I could show you a few examples if you are interested. And then it's also good to understand what are the company stereotypes, as I mentioned, for example, in an agency, uh, developers or IT professionals in general, they are exposed to a variety of projects, which means they change technologies more often than those who work for a product centric company. Um, okay, just an, as an example. And then rewriting so first analyzing the job requirement and then rewriting it gets easy because you already have this uh, frame in your mind. Um, that will eventually help you increase the response rates and IT candidates will want to interact with you instead of other recruiters who know nothing or very little about uh, the IT space. So the mistake number one I would like to warn you about is uh, copy pasting job requirements that you receive from clients to job boards or websites or emails. You know, that's uh, not, not sustainable. Like um, this leads to low response rate. I would like to discourage you from just copy pasting uh, what you receive from your partners. If you are an external recruiter, you may interact with um, internal HR person and you can just copy paste, that's not a good strategy. That's all uh, that I'm trying to say. So the key is to focus on what the IT professional needs to know. So those must have skills. For example, for PHP developer, it is the language PHP and uh, the framework Symfony or Laravel. So that's, uh, you know, into large extent, all that the person needs to know about the stack. Um, probably you can tell more about the database, but it's most commonly used uh, MySQL, the relational database. Um, so um, unless there is something super specific, then that's, uh, that's, that's important. But then you need to actually add something more unique, something interesting, something exciting, right? Because developers now receive lots of opportunities and many of them are essentially Backend developer, PHP, Symfony, right? Like there, those are the most common um, stacks, technical stacks. Um, backend developer, PHP, Laravel. Backend developer, PHP, Symfony. Or Java developer, Spring. Um, JavaScript developer, Node.js, right? Like these are the most common roles within the um, backend development area. So as soon as you start um, making it more exciting and um, you start adding more value on the market, this is what eventually we call the value adding interactions. So um, I would encourage you guys to ask yourself a question like, am I adding some value in here? Or am I sort of just uh, you know, copy pasting the job requirement to a job board and I receive applications and then I forward them to the um, hiring manager? Like there is a little um, value added and sooner or later this will be replaced with uh, all the software that is being uh, built as we speak. So the cool thing is that this approach doesn't work just for me, right? It works for all kinds of recruiters, talent acquisition specialists, HR managers who embrace this market shift from the administrative work to marketing and sales in IT. Like for example, Yui, she's a recruiter from Thailand 
At first she thought that she would be just posting the JSON job boards, but then after she started using this approach, she got great results immediately. And she wrote on Trustpilot um, the last sentence, recently I adopted a new way of writing job ads as Michael suggested, and I got an amazing result, right? And that was like within, within a week, if I recall correctly. Maybe you are now thinking it's only for those who speak tech language like I do, but Yui, for example, like she's not a technical person. She just joined some of the courses and, and learned this approach and um, there, she, there she was. Maybe you are now thinking it doesn't work for your clients and their job requirements, but I can tell you that I've been working with recruiters from I know India, um, Lithuania, UK, Australia, United States, and the approach is, is very similar across the board because the clients have very similar needs. The developers are very similar, you know, overwhelmed with all, all the opportunities. Um, or probably you wonder if this approach can be used in your country. Um, and I can tell you that, um, you know, most likely it can because uh, the social media are, you know, widespread and most of the developers are anyways using social media. They have very short attention span. So you need to get their attention really quickly. And the traditional job requirements, they just don't serve this purpose anymore. So the fact that is that the IT market is changing as we speak. AI-driven recruitment software, automation, the demand and supply in equilibrium is here to stay. So we as recruiters, we also need to apply new strategies to fill IT vacancies while at the same time building good relationships with technical candidates, um, which actually leads us to the second, second area. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to write in, in chat. I see Reiner is uh, raising hand, uh, very cool. Uh, we have the uh, Q&A session uh, at the end. So, um, I, I see that you are raising your hand and you will be able to, uh, to ask later. Uh, cool. So the second part, how to engage with dozens of candidates without sending them hundreds of emails manually every single day. <clears throat> when I started recruiting IT talents, I did exactly what um, I saw others do, um, you know, and they also do it these days. I activated LinkedIn Premium um, and I started sending LinkedIn messages. Uh, you know, like, hey, you know, we are looking for a JavaScript developer. Um, and that's, you know, um, after only a few days, I was very frustrated because of little to no response. I felt like I was bothering people. That was not really the, the sweet spot I was hoping for. I didn't enjoy the activity at all because I was sending messages to candidates and like, oh, um, I felt like quitting because it was so annoying, right? Um, as an IT person and a digital marketeer, I tried to reverse engineer the process um, and I wanted to avoid the most boring, the most mundane tasks while spending most of the time engaging with highly qualified candidates. Like I didn't want to talk to just anyone, but only to those highly qualified candidates and get them on the phone, talk to them and get them excited about the opportunity. Because I knew that as soon as I'm talking to them, I can sell them the job opportunity at hand very well. You know, I can talk about the technical stack. I can talk about how cool the existing team is. I can talk about the uh, technical lead or, you know, whatever I learn about that team. I can find an angle that is interesting and exciting for the developer based on the mind map that I shared with you um, a few minutes ago. So... Uh, most recruiters I worked with focused on sourcing, on messaging, right? Like most of the time, as you can see right here, most of the time spent is um, on the sourcing activity. Open up LinkedIn profile and start sending messages. That's most of the time. And eventually, you know, very little time screening or selling to those candidates. Um, so uh, this is what's happening um, on, on the market these days. But I wanted to focus on the other activities. That's where I wanted to spend my time mostly, you know, qualifying candidates, screening them, looking at their skills, assessing, evaluating, and introducing to the hiring manager. So I went on to set up advertisement campaigns on LinkedIn. And uh, you can see one of our campaigns. Uh, this is the campaign where we invested about 500 euros. You can see it right here, spent 490 euros. And uh, this was the message that LinkedIn 
LinkedIn itself, right? Like this is the LinkedIn advertising platform, not any, uh, you know, dark shady zone uh, Chrome extension, but a proper LinkedIn advertisement platform. And the platform was sending messages for me um, and I paid to LinkedIn 500 euros instead of spending my time to send those messages or getting some, you know, third party application, which uh, would maybe cause my account to be so suspended. So this is a proper LinkedIn advertisement. And uh, this is the message that LinkedIn was sending to candidates automatically. So for those <clears throat> 490 euros, it sent 2,299 messages automatically. I just uh, identified the target group and LinkedIn was sending those messages. Out of those, 80% were opened. So 1,845. 58 leads were generated. So I received 58 contacts from people who wanted to get in touch with me. And uh, 25 of those 58 were pre-qualified. So I you know, looked at their profile, I screened them, I looked at their GitHub repository and whatnot. And uh, 10 of them, um, eventually I introduced to the CTO. The CTO liked five of them and uh, he asked four of them to go to the, through the assessment one offer was extended eventually. So uh, I, I got uh, about 26,000 euros in commission for going through this, uh, this set of activities. Um, so you can see how, how great this approach can be if you focus on where your strengths are. Maybe some of you actually are great at sending messages. Like I don't want to discourage you if you enjoy the activity. It's just that um, you know LinkedIn doesn't want us recruiters to be sending messages because they want us to be spending money on ads or on job uh, job portal. So that's why they don't really improve the messaging functions. And it also causes some friction on, uh, on the candidate side, right? So it's not really a long-term strategy. That's what uh, I'm trying to say. And um, you can see that this could also be uh, quite profitable. If this was a senior position, uh, the client was in, uh, in the United States. So um, that's why the commission was quite, uh, quite uh, nice. Um, but the you know most exciting part on my end was uh, that I was able to only focus on the other part of the chart that I was showing you, you know, where I'm able to add most value instead of sending messages. Um, so yeah, because I spent very little time on this project thanks to the campaign on the social media. I spent four hours to set up the campaign, three hours to pre-screen candidates, 15 hours to call candidates, uh, six hours to um, interview candidates, and then some follow-up administration. I don't know, it could be probably 30, 40 hours roughly. So um, the mistake I would like to um, warn you about is sending hundreds of messages on LinkedIn every week manually, instead of engaging with candidates. Uh, because this sooner or later leads to burnout and frustration. And I've seen this firsthand when uh, hiring, not hiring managers, but uh, recruitment managers ask me to train their team. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a session, but there are say 15 people and we can see that three, four, five of them are already burned out because of very little response and too many messages sent every day. So, uh, so that's why. And this strategy also doesn't work just for me. It also works for other recruiters who joined my training and learned how to apply it. For example, Ferenc, he's a recruiter who was sending messages before and now started using this approach on the social media too. And you can see his testimonial on Trustpilot. He wrote, I managed to learn from Michael even after 10 years in the tech hiring game. The technique I learned was presented well. I was able to apply it right after on two different search projects. Good leads were generated that ended up in two candidates reaching the offer stage. And I don't know about his commission in, in this case, but if it is only 5,000, say, per, per person, which is, I would say, like the, the uh, um, bottom uh, for IT you know, position, probably it's, say, if only 5,000 times two, it's already 10,000 that he got uh, um, just by applying this strategy. Maybe you are now thinking you cannot do this because you don't know anything about marketing. And actually you don't have to. Like Ferenc, he, he's not a marketeer. I'm not a marketeer. I'm a technical person who learned a few strategies. And um, that's actually what I can also teach you. 
maybe you are afraid of spending a few hundreds of euros on ads and that's a completely valid uh, fear um, there is a risk involved obviously because you can spend 500 euros and not get anything back uh, you may not have any good candidate eventually there is no guarantee obviously it's advertisement paid advertisement but uh, you need to take into consideration that your time also costs some things um, you know it's not free that you are sending messages so uh, it's at the end of the day it's numbers game and um, um, we need to also look at how to um, how to work in a sustainable manner where you sort of diversify this risk and you know how not to overspend on ads because it's really easy to spend I know 10,000 which you don't want but you can experiment and try with a few hundreds of euros and you may get really, really great results as, as I did, for example. Probably you are thinking you are too busy to manage your new ad campaign because you are already you know, fighting multiple fires. Uh, but um, you know, as soon as you set up a campaign such as this one, you would actually free up a lot of your time and you don't have to send messages anymore, which could save you hours every week. So the truth is that IT professionals are sick and tired of recruiters who keep sending them irrelevant generic messages on LinkedIn. So we need to get better at communicating with prospects and also engage them to send them only relevant messages. And when they see an ad, it's not as annoying as if someone is approaching the candidate uh, um, manually. Which also brings us to the third point, like how to monetize candidates who are not hired immediately, yet have a high disposable income and want better career opportunities. So I'll tell you what also happened last year in January 2020, when I was recruiting a head of software development for an international client. Um, I was talking to potential clients, uh, um, not clients, but candidates, all of them seasoned IT managers, 15 years of experience, and I was surprised that they cannot sell themselves um, effectively, you know, like really senior guys, but they couldn't talk about their core competencies or strengths. And I was wondering like, how this is even possible? Like I'm presenting them such a great, you know, life-changing opportunity to relocate and become a head of soft development in a prestigious company. And they cannot even tell me why they should go there. Um, they didn't really have any strong profiles or resumes because they didn't need it in the past. Um, in IT, people can get jobs easily, which, you know, some of them, you know, could get lazy. Um, cool, but if one of them gets hired, there are still 99 other people who I cannot really monetize in any way. Say, this is what it looks like, right? Like I'm, I'm talking to 100 candidates, 100 IT people. Uh, one of them gets hired. I get the recruitment fee. 99 of them, not a good fit. And I think, oh my God, like no money, no honey, right? Um, so I started offering some, um, the same IT professionals who were not a good fit for the position. I started offering them some additional services, just such as coaching or professional rebranding, LinkedIn improvement, social media marketing through a different brand called Career Upgrade Tools career upgrade like you know it's for it people so it's upgrade and tools it's it's meant to um resonate well in the tech um tech tech industry and it worked like a charm it worked because i had existing relationships with those it candidates they knew me we uh, spoke on the phone a week or two weeks ago they trusted me because i had some really good opportunity for them they liked me because i could speak their language and uh, that's how I'm able to get additional revenue from those guys who are not hired. Um, so say out of those 100, one or two are hired, I get the recruitment fee. 98 are not hired. And obviously not out of all 98, I get some commission. But say there are again, three, four or two or one, sometimes people who are in the right frame of mind and they want some additional services or, or coaching or rebranding. They want some other career opportunities. So this is also a way how to deliver some value for them and also get some commission as a recruiter. 
So the mistake I would like to um, warn you about is uh, leaving the money on the table because you guys um, who already interact with IT candidates, you have very valuable relationships and you need to look for ways how to monetize them. Um, and some of these services that I offer to those professionals um, are, for example, LinkedIn profile improvement for 690 euros or online credibility boost for 1,990 euros. Um, but the cool, like really, really cool thing is that um, you guys can become partners of this and you can earn commission um, just for referring IT candidates. So the Career Upgrade Tools partnership offers you $1 for each person who downloads a free ebook, like completely free ebook through your link and you get $1. At the end of a month, it could be $10, $20, $50, $100. And also you get 30% commission on each sale. And you've seen these prices, right? 690 or 2000 euros. So you would get 30%, which is 30% um, out of 690. It's um, 240, right? Almost. Uh, and 30% out of 2000, uh, that's uh, like almost 700 euros, right? So um, it's, it's quite cool. Um, Imagine you just get 30% commission on each such sale just for referring free ebooks to your existing IT candidates. Commissions are paid monthly via PayPal. Um, maybe you are now wondering how can you do some coaching or services, but the point is that you don't have to, right? You don't coach anyone, you don't organize any training or whatever. You just refer those IT candidates who are not a good fit for your positions and you say for example like hey dear candidate you are not a good fit um, that's a pity like just to make sure that next time you are better prepared for such an opportunity here is a free ebook uh, from michael who has been a cto and he can help you um get better career opportunities next time download his ebook here it's a free ebook he downloads it we know it's from you so it's very straightforward Probably you wonder if your IT candidates are interested and I can just tell you not all of them, obviously, but there is always a segment of them who are. It's just the numbers game, right? There is a say 2%, 2%, 3%, 5%, it depends. So the fact is that everyone wants more and better career opportunities sooner or later. It's just a question of the time. Uh, the seasoned IT professionals, they have high income and they can afford these additional services. Maybe you think people don't download free eBooks anymore. Well, they do. You can see a screenshot from just a few months ago. Um, in, in one week, um, through one link, you can see 150 people download it. So uh, there is 41% conversion, meaning almost every second person opted in and downloaded the ebook. So if you sent within a month 150 candidates or actually 360, you would get $150 with this, uh, with this conversion. So guys, before we go to the FAQs um, and I don't see the hand uh, up anymore, but I'm sure you will have some questions. Um, let, me, let me ask you a quick question and you can just respond in chat um, what would you like? Would you like going forward to fill more IT vacancies, say backend developers, frontend developers, data engineers, architects, etc., DevOps, or would you like to earn more money on the side, or would you like both? And you can just write one, two, or three in chat. Okay, so um, Maeta is writing one, Reiner is writing three, Irina one, Raquel two. Cool, cool. Katarina three. Very cool, very cool. Mihaela three, three. Yeah, you guys, uh, some of you are like me, you know, like also my wife, she uh, appreciates if I earn some money on the side. So uh, so definitely that's something to, to consider, especially if you get constant stream of candidates and the majority of them is not a good fit. You can just partner with Career Upgrade Tools and uh, um, and start start earning money on the side. 
Okay, uh, for you guys who responded one, two or three, uh, can I show you a few options? How can I actually help you get to a point where you can speak with IT candidates, where you can organize similar campaigns and where you can get money on the side? Like, would you like to, to see something that um, we've been working on and how we help recruiters, HR professionals, talent acquisition professionals, even sales teams actually? especially in recruitment agencies. You can just write yes in chat or no, like Michael, this was terrible, terrible idea. Yes, of course, Reiner, yes. Um, okay, so um, I can show you. And meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, you can just type in chat. I have the chat window open, so I can also answer these questions meanwhile. Um, so, um, you know, this is, this is what I discovered after I trained 24,000 IT and HR professionals, and many of them were from international recruitment agencies. And I also um, hired uh, and recruited countless of IT professionals over the last, I don't know, seven, eight, 10 years ago. Um, you know, the key to success when it comes to tech recruitment is um, to learn how to analyze the technical JDs, because um, I've seen a lot of recruiters who are wasting their time looking for the wrong person just because they couldn't analyze the job requirement properly and extract the must-have skills. The second step is the confidence screening of candidates. You know, you need to be able to quickly look at the candidate's profile and say, okay, this is a DevOps engineer, this is a DevOps developer or, you know, whatever. And just based on a few keywords, you need to be able to recognize if it is a backend developer, front-end developer, et cetera. But it's not difficult at the end of the day. Um, eventually fill more IT vacancies and earn money on the side because uh, like our capacity has some ceiling. So even if you spend 10 hours, 12 hours a day recruiting, you will hit the ceiling and increasing your productivity will not help. So the only way to get more money in your pocket at the end of the day is through diversifying your income and um, utilizing the existing relationships with candidates. So eventually we start with first understanding the IT foundation, analyzing IT job requirements. It's a skill. And, um, you know, I, I wrote one of these books here. I maybe have it here. Oh yeah, it's here. So uh, in uh, this book or ebook, you can just get it in our shop. You have a few examples, for example, a Python developer, Python developer. So what, what uh, would I ask a hiring manager if I see a job requirement such as this one? The next step is screening candidates. And I wrote another a book. Uh, it's a guide. It's not really any literacy. It would not win some literacy award, definitely, but it serves the purpose. It will teach you how to, how to screen a candidate, um, how to ask really good questions to say um, IT support specialist, or database developer in this case. And there are usually some uh, QR codes so you can watch additional videos. The next step is uh, getting candidates through social media because everyone is on social media these days. And um, you, you know, the sending messages manually is not really a sustainable strategy. Uh, and monetizing candidates is the last step. <clears throat> um, it could be a first step for many of you but it could be the last step in this, in this kind of a journey where you hit a limit or some ceiling in terms of being senior enough. You already know, you know what you are doing. You can speak with candidates, you can analyze job requirements, but you hit some ceiling in terms of your income. So you look for ways how to, uh, how to um, uh, diversify your, your income. So these are just a few um, books or eBooks that I have wrote and created over the last, uh, I don't know, two years, three years. And uh, what you can see on the right uh, bottom side is the toolkit, which includes 300 video lessons. I got carried away a little. It's crazy. I recorded 300 videos uh, that are um, now used um, by, by recruiters around the world. So now you have actually two options um, as, as of today, you know, um, Thursday, March 4th. Um, if, I, if I look at what do we have in the pipeline um, is uh, the training for individuals. So if you are an individual recruiter, you uh, can join the next cohort, the next program that I organize. And it starts in March, um, March 29th. 
it is for two weeks and the previous one was in uh, December um, and the before was uh, well I don't recall like a few months every every few months we organize this um, and uh, it is uh, actually really cool because um, only for 97 euros you will learn a lot of these strategies where we have several sessions um, like more engaging sessions this is a webinar where I just talk but during those sessions it's it's not a webinar it's like a meeting with 20 people where we look at job requirements we uh, focus on these strategies and it is quite uh, quite engaging much more engaging than what you can see now and um, uh, the, the second option is the VIP ticket which is something I'm super excited about because you will also get a certificate of completion you will um, you will pass a certification exam but the best part is actually the fourth tick box you will get access to IT vacancies so that you can start recruiting for our partners for some clients and you can start doing it on the site right away you don't have to look for clients and I know that some of you may be uh, focusing on other roles you may have a great job which pays well it's security that's great um, so you can go through this training and we will after you get a certificate we will partner you with uh, our partners we will team you up or we will introduce you to our partners who will start sharing some of these job uh, requirements with you um, so that's really the best part we will share with you the job requirements and you can start recruiting on the site a few hours per week but right after so you can start getting the commission and uh, also even within the standard ticket we will onboard you as the as the career upgrade tools partner so um you will recover these costs really quickly as soon as you learn how to do it um you know you go through this training and you start introducing your candidates if you want obviously it's optional it's just there and um just uh, two weeks ago um one um recruiter from netherlands introduced us to a candidate IT, IT um, network engineer, um, they bought the training and for 2000, not the training, but the coaching program for 2000 and the recruiter got 600 euros in commission uh, just for introducing us. So that's really cool. Um, so eventually with, after you pass the certification, um, you would become our local partner on the ground. Like some of you are in uh, Macedonia, some of you are in Latvia, um, Romania, I've seen like Slovakia, obviously, right? Hello. So uh, you will become our local partner on the ground, which is also why we organize uh, these uh, training uh, sessions. And we only have 20 seats available um, because um, say I organized webinars with 100 people and it's very, um, very, um, like non-engaging it's very passive you are just listening to me um not engaging at all but what we like to do during these webinars uh, not webinars but training sessions is to have it more engaging so that's why the limit 20 people so if you if you'd like to join you can just go to training.gigrecruiters.com and uh, you can get your ticket uh, right away i'll just type it here training uh, not double and training geekrecruiters.com and you can you can get your ticket um, either a standard or the VIP and the the second option is the program for teams um, these are custom programs uh, with the goal to increase your team's performance by at least 10 percent and I know this is possible because um, there are so many opportunities in IT um, so usually we split the program in three parts at first there is a private training that covers the it landscape uh, there is an instructor who works you walks you through like lots of uh, these um, um, exercises and worksheets and courseware and then the, the whole team passes the certification exam and then the most exciting part we focus on the more more advanced roles like how to recruit devops engineers how to recruit um, uh, cloud architects, um, how to source, um, I don't know, a cybersecurity specialist, etc. So those are the more advanced modules, usually better suited for teams. Uh, but for this, we only have two slots, uh, slots per month. So um, 
we don't have any slots for March. We have only one for May, uh, April and one for May. So uh, this is limited capacity. And um, as you've seen, like we are um, onboarding um, agencies and teams from around the world. So if you are a part of a team, if you are in an agency, you may want to discuss it with your team, but you really need to act uh, quickly because uh, yeah, this capacity is limited. So now you have two options based on your current setup. If you're an individual, the program that starts in March would work better. If you are in a team and your managers would pay for um, premium training, um, that would increase the whole team's performance by at least 10%. Uh, which means that the training pays for itself within a quarter, um, then you can fill in an application and I'll share the link also in, uh, in chat, in chat here. So uh, let me just find it. It's here. So you can, you know, you can just uh, opt in. Um, as soon as you opt in, a colleague of mine would get in touch with you or with your colleague and uh, arrange a quick call to see if this is a good fit or not. And um, then we would uh, take it from there. Does it make sense to you guys? Uh, is it is it straightforward? Does it does it make sense? You can just let me know in in chat. Uh, yes, Reiner, cool. So uh, during the last uh, last cohort in December, it was uh, quite a lot of fun. Like I like to make these uh, um, these group sessions engaging, so people send their current job requirements, and then we discuss it. Um, in a you know sort of virtual circle, which is uh, always more fun than now just talking to a bunch of you guys and not really knowing you. So uh, during the um, program, what we do is at first we introduce each other, we learn a little about everyone, which is also a great opportunity to um, to to uh, get to know some people because now I, I assume if you are like we here in Slovakia, you don't really meet people, you know, in person. So at least this could be a good opportunity to, to talk to people. And um, if you also go for the certification program, then we will start sharing those job requirements with you. So you can start earning money um, right after. Plus, obviously, the Carabgrade Tools partnership, so you can get commission with, um, you know, on the side. So you will like start earning quite a lot of money if you, um, just learn how to do it properly. Okay, cool. So we still have a few more minutes, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I think this is the last slide in the presentation. Let me check. Yes, yes, it is the last one or not. Um, probably, yeah, yeah. Like there is just uh, some FYI that you need to signal your interest ASAP so we can actually book a slot for you. Um, and, you know, just think, um, you know, if you only place one candidate, thanks to this training, would that would it be worth those 197 euros? Um, then, you know, it obviously depends on how much commission do you earn. But assuming it's just, I don't know, 10% of the candidate salary, if you work directly with, with the client, then obviously this pays back uh, many times. Um, there is also a strong uh, money back guarantee. Um, no questions asked if you don't like it or whatever happens, you know, you, you are not satisfied, but then you just write to our support and we will refund the transaction. So it's very uh, risk-free and straightforward. Um, so some, you know, like we have really great rating on Trustpilot. Some say like, hey, this is really cool. Now we know what skills are essential on the back end, front end. Our directors are impressed with the quality and quantity of the content. Um, some say that these courses are 100% must have for those who start careers in recruiting. Um, in Romania, some of you are in Romania. So uh, this Brains Consulting is also in Romania. It's fantastic that they found you. They wrote on uh, Trustpilot. Yulia wrote, um, uh, guys are doing their best to show recruiters what exactly they need to know. So uh, this is a good point. I don't really want to overwhelm you with um, IT terminology. It's really easy sometimes to just, you know, throw it out, but uh, I like to take it step by step so you guys are not overwhelmed with um, the abundance of IT terms. Or Deborah, she wrote, a geek recruiter gives me the possibility to better understanding how to conduct interviews for IT roles. 
Uh, Michael Lavrot, um, I'm really surprised how professional uh, the course is from Geek Culture is. So um, yeah, like you have these two options, either the individual training or the team training. So uh, whatever works for you, you can just you know apply for one or the other. Um, and you can also not do anything, you know, uh, you can not, you can do nothing. <laughs> of course, my English. Um, however, I would say you are losing opportunities here because uh, you can just, you know, learn how to uh, cross sell to candidates and you can start earning money on the site right away. Um, you can also just go through YouTube or Wikipedia, but, um, you know, there is no strategy in this. It, there is no clear learning path. It will take you forever. And I've seen a lot of recruiters burned out. Um, you can ask your colleagues and friends to help you, but, um, you know, it's not really consistent. They often have no materials, no follow-up. Uh, there is nobody to look over your shoulder and give you some feedback. So it will, at the end of the day, take way too long and it will be much more expensive in the long run. So um, that's why I strongly suggest to choose one of these two options. If you are a manager, then the program for the whole team would be a better option. If you're an individual recruiter, independent freelancer, or you are working in a company, you are happy, you are satisfied, and you just want to learn how to do it better, then the program that starts on March 29th would be, would be better. And people sometimes ask me on the social media, hey, Michael, I don't have time to study. I already work two jobs. And I would say, you know, like, there is something wrong probably if you work two jobs um, that are different, if they are not complementary. Because, um, you know, there, are, there is so much money in IT recruitment, you are probably not um, doing it the right way. You are not working smart, you are working hard. So what I would like to teach you during the training is um, how to work smart, not hard. Some say, yeah, this is scam, especially people on social media sometimes, they're so negative uh, and they say, this is scam. Like, and I'm like, how this can be scam? Like now, you know, I have over 2000 subscribers on, if, on YouTube. Like I've uh, published um, 200 or 300 videos on YouTube itself. Like how this can be scam, right? Uh, like all these videos of me talking about uh, technologies and recruitment and uh, some IT terms and programs and whatnot. And we have really good rating on Trustpilot, 4.6 uh, roughly. Um, I have like thousands of followers also on, like I'm not any superstar. What I'm just trying to show you is that this is not a scam. Like I haven't just woken up yesterday and I'm trying to sell you something that does not exist. Like this is a real, real thing. Um, and some people say, hey, I know all of this. You know, what you are showing me is obvious. And this can sometimes happen when say, I show you a job requirement of a data engineer or an ETL developer and someone says like, I already know what is ETL developer. And I'm like, well, okay, but this is just the basic. Like, what about some of these other terms? Like, can you, um, can you really look for the ETL developer on LinkedIn? Can you compose the Boolean search so that uh, it will find you those Oracle developers, etc.? cetera? Um, and some say that the recruiters here in Germany, Romania, India, Australia are so much better than those in, you know, and then they enumerate some other countries. And again, like it doesn't matter on the location, but, you know, obviously some people are more like advanced and some people are just starting their career in IT recruitment. And I just had a call with someone earlier today who is transitioning it was yesterday, actually, yes. who is transitioning from non-tech recruitment to tech recruitment. Like senior person for 10 years in IT, uh, in uh, recruitment, but zero in IT recruitment. So, um, you know, like everywhere around the world, uh, there may be people like you who are transitioning or have not been working in IT. So there is nothing about it wrong. Uh, some say it's too expensive in our market because the average salary here is 400, you know, uh, but, you know, like I, I, I don't really like this argument, especially because it doesn't make sense, right? Like if you are a recruiter, you are not earning the average salary, um, hopefully. If yes, then there is something wrong. Um, and also here in Slovakia, recruiters don't earn the average salary. Also in the UK, right? Like people just, you know, who are doing recruitment, they don't earn average salary. So this argument itself is not applicable. 
uh, which means that, you know, and especially with our program, you can plug into the ecosystem and you can start earning money um, after two months or three months, uh, which means that you, you know, this is an investment. It's not a cost uh, anymore. And some want to talk to their spouse, which is completely relevant. That's why you still have uh, a few weeks to decide uh, from now, from this point. But on the other hand, we only have 20 spots and um, they can get uh, sold out uh, quickly. And then we don't, you know, um, open it up to 50 people because it's not like here. Like here, I don't care if there are 50 people or 100 um, because we don't really engage. But during the program, like we need to go through like each individual account, make sure that you have access, make sure that you go through the exercises and you pass the certification and we onboard you, etc. cetera. So um, there is this limit uh, of 20. Um, if the, your company doesn't pay for the training, it's, it's a valid argument, but it does not mean that you cannot pay for it yourself, right? Uh, some, some of you may want better opportunities, even if, even if your company doesn't pay for it. Um, and some say, hey, uh, how do I know I will really get a refund if something goes wrong? Um, and I can, you know, what I'm showing you right here on, our, on an enlarged screen is some of our past refunds. So we've been really, you know, for, for the last year, we refunded, I don't know, 10, 12 transactions of people who wanted something else, they didn't like it. So we just refund, like there is nothing wrong about it. Um, and, uh, you know, some companies pay the training for 2000 euros. Um, so, uh, you know, what you are now being offered is like literally just 97 or just 197. Um, and you get pretty much the same content that other companies, other teams paid 2000 euros for. Um, so, um, yeah, you get pretty much the same, just in a different setup. Um, recruitment in IT can be fun and very lucrative. You probably just need the right person to help you get to a point where you enjoy it and you generate solid uh, income. So these are the steps. Uh, yet again, the first step, the foundation. Uh, there is this IT talents book, then analyzing job requirements, then screening, and then uh, getting more IT candidates on social media, and eventually uh, the partnership with Carabray Tools so you recover a lot of uh, costs. And there is one question I just see from an anonymous uh, attendee. And the question is, uh, I'm really interested in the individual training with the live session. Um, it, it includes, are these in different schedules if you are working all day? Oh yes, yes, actually these are um, after uh, 5 p.m., 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. because I know that uh, many of you are working and you cannot uh, attend it. So, uh, um, so uh, these happen after work and um, we try to find some balance between, you know, not having those sessions too late. Um, so uh, last time, I think it was at 6 p.m. It was already quite late. So this time, I guess we will go with uh, 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. I'm not 100% sure now, but it should be after work. And um, uh, so you should be able. Yeah, like that's, that's a good question. And Reiner asked, I'm part of a staffing agency. Uh, you conduct resume writing. Is there a preferred resume format for IT like uh, mobile developers, Java and such? Um, well, I would not say that the design itself matters too much, but what matters is uh, the connection to the standard IT role. And there are several roles. If you look at um, um, whatever job board, you will find lots of synonyms. For example, um, backend developer or uh, Java backend developer or software programmer, uh, so software uh, developer backend, right? Like lots of different variations of pretty much the same. Um, but uh, sometimes it's very confusing. So um, I would at least, uh, I always suggest to have a very clear headline which is related to those, uh, um, to those uh, standardized roles. So you can find these roles on our mind map and you will see, for example, um, like uh, Java backend developer is like super straightforward. Um, or if it, is, uh, if it is a full spec developer, then it should be clear what language is on the backend and what framework is on the front end. So for example, um, 
C Sharp, Vue.js, full stack developer, right? So it's super clear. It's C Sharp on the back end. It's Vue.js with JavaScript on the front end, and it's a full stack developer. So this is uh, much more important than the visual representation of the um, of the resume. But it's really cool that you are you are performing something like this. Definitely, it's um, it's it's actually quite common also in outsourcing uh, companies where they uh, get a candidate CV and reconstruct another CV, uh, so without the name of the candidate, and then they send it to different potential clients. Uh, so uh, so that's you know uh, sort of similar. But what we are trying to do for for those. Uh, especially senior managers is also to go through a process of discovery. So sometimes they want to change their career. Sometimes they want to relocate. Sometimes they are not even clear how they should position themselves. Often we need to create some marketing collaterals for them, like record a podcast episode or record a video interview, which increases their perceived value on the market. We show them how to reposition as an expert on the market. So it's not just resume like the PDF uh, because the value of such would be, I don't know, $50, but we go much further in terms of adding value uh, to them. Um, cool, so I answered the question in the Q&A. Um, that, that was a good, good question. Like what I, was doing um, like say two years ago, I was organizing some full day training sessions and sometimes people complain they cannot join them because um, they work all day. So now we try to do it in the uh, like late afternoon, early evening. So people are not too tired yet uh, still fresh, but still can be full day at work. So um, yeah, hope this, uh, hope this will work for you guys. So um, will, will any of you guys would like to join? Just let me let me know if this is something you consider, like obviously, you know, no, no commitment or anything, just if uh, you guys watching this uh, would consider, let me know. You can always just visit the, the websites and uh, take it from there. Okay, so we will follow up with you. I'll send you an email and you can, uh, you can take it from there. So I see that we are already 13 minute past, uh, minutes past. So uh, what we can do is to wrap it up quickly. If you guys don't have any questions, it's been a pleasure being here with you. So hopefully you learned uh, something new. Hopefully you have the worksheet and you can, you know, um, at least see the mind map. If uh, yeah, you have any question, you can also send me an email afterward. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks, B B Biliana. Cool. Michaela, thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful evening.